first things first, news. I don't know exactly how that happened, but I'm going to the European MTBO Championships as a part of the athletes team. So now we are both preparing for the championships. This year Lithuania is the host country. The organizers chose the reins around Ignalina, which is place in the eastern part of the country where a national park with 126 lakes is. So we are expecting some mosquitoes. European Championships don't have a stable program. It varies by the terrains available in the area. It's always sprint or middle, long distance or must start and mixed relay. This year it's going to be sprint, long distance and mixed relay for elite and new 23 categories. Youth and juniors will have normal relays instead of the mixed ones and middle distance on top. An essential piece of information is that off-track riding is allowed here. That's one rule which is not uniform everywhere and it depends on the rules of each country. For example, in Czech Republic we usually can leave tracks by running and we have to have our bikes in hand at least 10 centimeters above the ground. In some countries like Austria it's forbidden completely to leave the tracks and in Lithuania or in Finland, for example, it's allowed to ride everywhere. It doesn't mean it's possible to ride everywhere. And it also means that the riders have to get used to their local rules and think about the route choices a little bit differently. We are going to Lithuania two weeks earlier because we want to get ready for the European Champs the best way we can. We plan to participate in the Lithuanian Cup nearby Vilnius, where we are heading right now and then have some trainings in the local terrains. And we also need to chill a bit because we didn't have much, re much rest lately. <laughs> Lithuania is one of our favorite countries. We spent there five months in 2018. Based on that Nidia likes it there during World Championships in 2017. And it was very nice. We traveled around, we spent some time in our schools, of course. <laughs> we learned and forgot some phrases in Lithuanian. And yeah, it was a very nice time and we are glad to be back. But now it's time to hit the road. And we are finally in the area of tomorrow's, today's event center. And in, in eight hours we are starting to the long distance. Good night. Sam, do you have till start? Mm, <laughs> 20 minutes <laughs> or something. <laughs>
it was a very diverse long distance there were difficult and long route choices there were short legs and also a small park in an urban area it was something like a little sprint in the middle of the long distance for me the beginning of the race was pretty tough on my way to first control i find out three things that i probably left my legs in hungary that cutting is allowed, but it's not a good idea to cut that often. And that the dotted paths are almost impossible to ride because of the deep sand. On my way to other controls, I also find out that the classification of the path isn't that accurate. Yeah, basically it's better to stay safe on the bigger roads than to experiment too much in the dots. <laughs> Tomorrow it's gonna be must start. It's not a very common type of phrase, so I'm glad I can practice it a bit. Especially because it's going to be on schedule for this year's World Championships in Sweden. <laughs> Today's must start was much better. Yesterday we went to bed early, so we rested better and we could fight more today. In the morning we were a little bit confused because we didn't know where the start is or if there are some starting groups or what. Uh, by the way, where is start? Uh, there. There, okay, perfect. From yesterday we also knew it's better to use the big roads wherever we can, so we did that and it was much better than yesterday. In the end it was a little bit weird must start for us because we didn't see anyone almost the whole race. <laughs> the manually start was pretty chilled at the beginning. I was riding with Ignas, the, some, some of the first controls, but then he had some mechanical issues with his bike. And I haven't seen anybody since then. In women's elite, Gabriela said goodbye to us, basically right after the start. And after the first butterfly, I also didn't see anyone just around the central controls and in the end I realized Carolina is right behind me but I didn't know it for a long time. Thomas Lozowski, Control Vieta, Vaikuna Katerolikos Grupe. I mean, you were probably in the front all the time. which was the long distance and the must start combined. I ended up second, just eight seconds behind Ignaz. The third one was Jonas Vitautas Gildis, who is pretty good foot O athlete. He's 48 in the world ranking. This year he's focusing on MTBO and we'll see him in the European Champs in, in Ignalaya. <laughs> <laughs> and this is world champion, I guess, uh, <laughs> Wojtek Nidi Ludwig. Yeah, and and uh, he's visiting us today here in Vilnius. <laughs> and we're talking about European champs in Indalina. So he had some questions uh, prepared for us. And the first one was... Uh, the first one is, have you been in the area before? Of yeah, uh, so I guess most of the Lithuanian, even Latvian or Estonian guys have been to Indalina. Because it's the one and only uh, like cross country center for uh, for skiing or biathlon, and there had been previously Lithuanian champs like in two thousand and five or six mm -hmm. or whenever like in back 
and I think the most recent one we had in 2016 when we had the World Cup in Kona. So the freshest maps are from 2016 and that's like recently and only six years ago. So that's a fun place to visit and I think that one of the best places to do mountain bike orienteering in, in Lithuania. So the other question was about the bike. How do, how do you like it there? That was ah, you said okay, it, yeah. I think, and then the bike. If yeah, hard tail or full suspension. Yeah, if my opinion is always if you have like a full suspension, you never go back to hardtail. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, uh, there are some asphalt climbs that that's good on the hardtail. But otherwise, I think the full suspension bike is much faster on downhills and there will be downhills. So I think it's uh, worth to take your full suspension and really ride it to the full gas down the hill and it really makes more fun. And uh, <laughs> yeah, next question, which <laughs> course I, I would be looking forward if I would be like, uh, it's really difficult to say because uh, courses are uh, actually and terrains differ a lot and mm -hmm. the sprint area is a lot of fun because you have a mixture of uh, forest and mm -hmm. town so you have to really navigate the tricky small tracks uh, in the forest because there's so many people walking in the forest yeah. and many 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 tracks made side by side and there's also some fast uh, asphalt roads in the city that you, you can ride and there's some really uphills and downhills which are which make it more fun so I think the sprint distance is it has it's like uh, one of the best like uh, for mountain bike orienteering uh, experiences that you can get there and the long distance it's actually uh, about uh, choosing the right route choice and there probably will be some tricky route choices uh, between I don't know some lakes or hills uh, mm -hmm. somewhere to navigate as it has a uh, quite small network of tracks and uh, not so many junctions mm -hmm. a lot of hills and it will be tricky to figure out which is the best route choice so I'm guessing that uh, both distances should be fun. And well for the relay, well, pff, how it goes, I don't know. It should be fun also. Uh, the only terrain that uh, I would think that it's the most boring one is the, the middle distance for uh, juniors and youth. Mm -hmm. But if you're an elite rider, you're lucky enough you don't get to ride there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the last one, are they going to be mosquito mosquitoes? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think that it's too early for mosquitoes and I think it's the best uh, time for mountain bike orienteering yet because the greenery is not that lush and you don't have high grass and nettles and everything and the mosquitoes are still sleeping so no mosquitoes, no high grass, no like uh, intense vegetation that you get stuck in and uh, no white nights that you get uh, more north if you go to Finland or, or, or Estonia so there you can have some nice sleep <laughs> Would it be a good idea to cut or not to cut? Uh, you need to know where it's a good idea to cut mm -hmm. so if you have like previous expertise uh, there are some areas that's good to cut mm -hmm. and there are some areas that if you're cutting there uh, We'll search at night with a helicopter for you, <laughs> I guess. So there might be places uh, where people cutting there might really get stuck for a long, long period of time. So okay. uh, I remember uh, somebody from French team was cutting in the long distance in, in Vilnius between the lakes. <laughs> so you can check the GPSs and there's somebody from France who is entering the lake <laughs> and okay. then coming back <laughs> because it's uh, not possible to cut to the lake like that yeah. only with your bike and compass you need to have a boat also okay. so we hope it will be uh, easy to read from the map if it's good to cut or not to cut uh, hope against hope <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay. That's it. so have fun in Galina <laughs>